Happy Halloween! I'm Garnet. This is Eggs. So, I am not a person who usually seeks out scary things. Not on purpose. I don't like jump scares. They hurt. I'm going to try not to jump scare you because of that. We'll see how that actually goes when I edit this. Like, instead of playing a jump scare, I might put, like, a still image. So, I, uh, I guess don't forget that there will be some scary faces on the screen and startle yourself. Anyway, um, I also don't like it when I'm, like, scrolling along on YouTube and, like, one of the thumbnails has some horrific face or something in it, so I like to avoid watching things that will give me those types of suggestions. Clearly, I do a bad job at that. I do have um, certain specific YouTubers that cover both like real and fictional disturbing things that I just can't really help but watch. At some point, not too long ago, I started getting recommendations of tons of videos titled as childhood trauma. I didn't click on them at first until I watched Wendigoon's version. I blame him for everything. These types of videos are where someone talks about all the mostly fictional things that scared or otherwise disturbed them when they were still a child. A lot of these videos were inspired by a trend started by Your Movie Sucks in like 2016, but there are videos like this that are older than that, just titled a little differently. Naturally, after watching one, I got even more recommendations than I was already getting. I was already getting so many. YouTube really wanted me to watch these for some reason, and I clicked on them. It's crazy how much they were recommended to me because when I purposely type in childhood trauma in the search bar for YouTube, these are not the videos I even get. I get videos that seem to actually be about trauma in children, as I probably should. If you want to find this type of video on purpose. There are some icebergs about this topic, so adding iceberg to get videos that like compile a bunch together. I actually prefer the more personal ones. I like to hear about that specific YouTuber's fears. I feel something more when I watch those ones. You could type in explained at the end, you'll get Wendigoons really easily. And you know, just typing in something along the lines of how I titled this video, you know, like things that scared me as a child, that thing. Typing in that will get you tons and tons. That's the easiest way, that sort of wording. You can play around with the wording. So there you go. If you found this video on accident and you wanted more like this, now you know. Watching these videos made me compile a list of all the things that I could think of that scared me personally. Some in common with others. I'll try not to linger too long on uh, the ones you've heard a million times. We'll see about that. A lot of these I think will be new to you though. I ended up with <laughs> approximately 50 things. <laughs> I'm a wimp. Um, and I split off into a second list of things that made me more sad or angry because I started noticing that there was kind of a lot of those like more than scared. So I like removed a whole bunch of things from this list that I saw at 50. So yeah, keep your eyes out for that bummer of a second video. It's gonna be so sad, why, why did I do that? I also compiled a third list of things that made me feel like nostalgic, which so far largely consists of things that scared other people, but not me, because I was watching like so many other people's videos to try and like, you know, bring up memories and uh, I ended up with a weird amount of fond ones. So I, I don't know if I'll make that video anytime soon, maybe like next year, maybe this year, I don't know, but that'll be fun for me when I get around to that. I will be withholding one fear. I'm not going into detail, but one completely fictional movie that I actually enjoyed at first for some reason got like subconsciously associated with a real life bad thing that happened to a point where I'm incapable of talking about it beyond what I'm doing right now. Uh, actual trauma. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up instead of completely just ignoring that not and, and hiding that is because I'm hoping that one day I will be able to separate the fictional fear from the real trauma. I'm hoping that I will be able to watch this movie again and tell you guys all about it because this would get a whole video of its own if I could ever accomplish this. I don't know if it's possible. The fictional fear is actually so silly. Like it's just one, it's just one little thing that made my brain connected to a real thing. It's not even barely connected. It, it's, this movie's really not an awful thing to, to most people. So you're, you're gonna think I'm kind of stupid when you, if you ever find out what it is. Away from that. Also, I do like some scary things. Like if you can call what I do like scary. I like really old horror. I like black and white silent movies, but Lugosi type stuff. I'll watch horror anime 
day and I'll watch like shows like Supernatural and I found some joy in reading creepypastas but I'll talk about why I like them later. So to be clear, I don't like avoid horror altogether. I don't live a life devoid of horror <laughs> except for whatever sneaks up on me or anything. Like I don't think that would be possible. I'm, I just avoid things that I think will jump scare me. Now, I did not order these from least to most scary. That's hard to figure out. First, I separated them by categories, like I put movies I put movies and shows together, but I separated things like games and books and, and toys, I had some toys that scared me. Then uh, for the shows and movies, I further separated them based on their like age ratings or what I think they should have been rated because I like couldn't find ratings for everything. And then within that, I organized them by year. There will be spoilers for a whole ton of, a whole crap ton of things. I put a list of each series in the description in case you want to avoid either spoilers or your own serious traumas but obviously you know looking looking at will spoil this video to some extent i mean not completely because you still won't like hear the reasonings or what exactly scared me just from looking at the list but you know you shouldn't look unless you you think you really have to uh so with that let's get to it Starting off with movies and shows, ones that are appropriate for children, or at least should be. The Wizard of Oz. Not the storm, not the wizard, not the monkeys, not the Wicked Witch of the West. None of that bothered me. What bothered me was the Wicked Witch of the East, how her feet curled up towards the beginning. I think it's some sort of weird body horror issue with, with me. I couldn't really comprehend what exactly happened that 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 sort of thing if i'm confused about something it will bother me more um i couldn't understand what was happening with her body since like she was like fully clothed you can see any of her skin or anything so my brain was trying to fill in the gaps and i didn't like anything that i imagined like to me her body was drying up or like she looked like really really rotten something like that and why, why does she move like that why does it curl <laughs> so where, where's her blood the entire house landed on her not seeing blood bothered me <laughs> why planet of the apes why is this rated g one summer when i was like still small enough to be living in the first house i ever lived in i remember it being very very hot outside it was it was summer and my mom decided that the two of us should have a Planet of the Apes marathon. Like the, the, the original, like the, yeah, 1968. Also, I have no idea where my siblings were. But anyway, so these movies had a lot of messed up things, but most of it didn't bother me a whole lot. What still bothers me, even as an adult, it's just the very beginning of the first movie. From the start, there's a woman who's like thing she was sleeping in because they were like in space. It had a leak. So she was just already dead from the beginning. You see her corpse right away and it looks like this. And I'm still not okay with it. E.T. I hate aliens. I don't like aliens. His neck stretches. Well, I don't like what humans have decided aliens are like. I don't like that. I don't know what aliens are actually like. I don't like that. His neck stretches, he screams, he's all wrinkly. I don't, mm, it's not good. He's not good. I don't like him. I don't care if he's not supposed to be evil and scared. I don't like him. Mama's family. I was a weird child for some of the things I watched. No one else watched this. The main character, Thelma, had a sister named Fran, who was played by, um, Rue, how the heck you say her name? Mick. McClanahan, she's, she's the girl, she's, she played Blanche on The Golden Girls. So I was very familiar with this face, because I watched Golden Girls as a child, of course I did. I did not expect them to kill her off, uh, and why it couldn't have just been a, a heart attack or something if they had to do that, if she wanted to leave the show and they decided that, oh, killing the character is what we do. I don't know why they do this so much in shows. They can't just go away and be happy and you just don't see them. Her death was choking on a toothpick. That would be so painful. <laughs> that would be horrible. Toothpicks are sharp. It would stab her. She would like I don't know drown in her blood. I don't I don't know if, I don't know if it, it would be enough bleeding for that, but it would be awful. Also, also it was supposed to be funny, I guess. Um 
I, I, I haven't rewatched that scene being an adult, but I remember, I think, I'm pretty sure they played the laugh track for it when we were told how she died. Like, we, that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> no. That was not funny. I can't, I can't think about Mom's Family without even thinking of that, like, legit traumatized thing. I stopped watching it. Pee-wee's big adventure. Pee-wee has a nightmare where his bike needs surgery and the clown bike surgeons just, they, that was what triggered my fear of clowns for years. As an adult, I actually really like clowns. I love them. Almost a little too much. Uh, <laughs> not sure why that switch happened, but this movie made it so that clowns would make me cry for like a while. That'll come up again. Also, the devil was there, but that part wasn't really scary for some reason. I kind of like that part. Um, but, and of course, Large Marge also scared me. Uh, it was an uncanny jump scare that I'm pretty sure that's on everyone's list. Scamper the Penguin. Don't know how many people have actually seen this. It's just, it's a cartoon, uh, two little penguins, children, childs, babies. They get lost. There are leopard seals, and I think most of the fear comes from me imagining something that didn't actually fully happen. So, so they had a lot of teeth, right? That was already scary. And then there's this scene where one tries to eat Scamper and Snowflake, Snowflake's the pink one. Um, but then a killer whale comes and tries to eat the seal. And in my memory, the whale got the seal and there was blood. But rewatching, and that didn't happen. That didn't even happen. I don't know why I thought that happened. <laughs> so I also am not sure if I'm like mixing my memories with another cartoon because I vaguely remember another penguin cartoon, but I can't find it. I cannot find evidence that this exists that looked really similar to Scamper. They weren't like colorful. They were just, you know, regular black and white penguins, but it was like really similar and I, I can't find it. I, it, it definitely, it wasn't anything live action. It wasn't um, anything like, like Happy Feet. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, what's it called? Like Pebbles, it wasn't that. I don't know if I'm like mixing up with that because I feel like there was a more violent one with blood. Well, there was blood in this because also a bird tries to eat Scamper and there is bloody claw marks on his back. This movie was just stressful overall. They get lost, they get caught by poachers. It all ends happy, but like that was a lot for little me to go through. I was so small. It sounds like there's an uncut version with more violent things, and I should take a look at that if I can. Elf! I loved Elf. I was not afraid of Elf. Normally. I didn't like that he ate cats, but aside from that, I thought he was funny. Um, what did scare me very badly was this DVD menu. He's looking at me. He's talking to me. He's acknowledging my existence. Things in the TV cannot talk to me. There's a TV across the way from me. It's making me nervous. I'm like, I, I hate that so much. You cannot break the fourth wall. My brother was also scared of it, and like we love, we he loved Alf as well. So like anytime we wanted to watch Alf together, we put in the DVD, you know, close it in there, run out of the room with the remotes, and like then point the remote around the corner to click the play button while avoiding Alf on this menu. <laughs> there was another thing that we would run from like that too, but I cannot f figure out what the movie was. It, 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 I don't think anything like moved even on the menu. I don't know why the menu was scarier than the movie for that one. It was like weird, they were like fairies or something, but they were ugly. It was live action, but they had like, I don't know if they were CG or like puppets. There was, they were really ugly fairy things. Oh, hi, greetings. Welcome to my DVD. Beetlejuice, I couldn't handle anything sudden. Like I said about jump scares, there was too many jump scares and that's pretty much it. Like the, the worms and like snaky stuff going on, that didn't bother me. Just all the, any, any sudden movement. I still kept rewatching the movie though, over and over as a kid. And uh, I learned where all the jump scares are and it's like built into me not to look. Dragon Ball Z. I have such a vague memory of seeing, just, just, just seeing the episode where Cell killed that guy by like sucking his insides out when I was very, very small. I didn't know what Dragon Ball Z was. I didn't know that's why I was watching at the time. I was very small. Cause I did start watching it not that long after. Um, but yeah, at the time I didn't know what it was and it just happened to be on. 
And I think I was at my aunt's house. I don't even think I was home. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, this one, like probably the least edgy Sonic cartoon. I don't actually know that. I haven't watched all of them, but like there, this show should not have been scary. Overall, it wasn't, but there was one specific episode, episode 16, Tails' new home. Sonic tries to find Tails a family to adopt him because he doesn't want- There's a cat's claw behind my ass. Sorry. Right. Son Sonic tries to find Tails a new home because he doesn't want him getting hurt anymore. And he ends up with this like clearly sewn together fox suit family who claims to be Tails' real parents who miss their baby so much. They act so nice to him at first and Tails is so happy to have his real family until Sonic leaves. And obviously they reveal themselves to be badniks and tie him up. I was not just in pre like preschool aged. I was like actually like in preschool when I saw this episode. It seems like things stick to my brain in like a different way when I watch them not at home. So I was in preschool. And yeah, the idea that someone who like is supposed to love you and be taking care of you and like was being so nice to you could like turn out to be evil and want to hurt you was like, that idea was introduced to me as a toddler and I did not like that. Boy Meets World. The Halloween special, of course, where almost everyone dies. I remember being very small and watching with my older sister. I, I most clearly remember the pencil through the head, the scissors in the back and getting like pummeled to death by books. Uh, that last one was really confusing for me, because, like, even as a kid, I was like, that's not enough books to kill you. That's not gonna kill you. <laughs> and there was, like, a lack- a weird lack of blood, um, aside from the message on the board at the beginning. Timmy the Tooth. I never watched Timmy the Tooth. There was an ad for it on a VHS for something else, and I'm not sure, uh, what that was for. Maybe Trolleys? Maybe Barney? I don't know, but... This is the Cavity Goon. I don't like him. I'm the Cavity Goon! He says the truth! Bible Man? The whole, the whole show did give me like a weird vibe, but the villains are just so ugly. That's pretty much it for me. I just hated looking at the villains. Um, and for some reason, I remember their deaths being really gross, but I like skimmed through one episode uh, before making this video and that villain just kind of like burst into non-gory shapes. So I don't know if anything gross actually happened or if I just thought that's how their, their deaths should look like. Um, I thought they turned into goo. I don't know. Uh, the only reason I even ever watched this thing was because we didn't have cable at the time. We went back and forth a lot on having cable or not. So I don't think we had cable at the time. Um, this was, what, it was pretty much the only thing I could find at that time on Sundays. I think it was on Smile of a Child. You can watch that without cable, right? Something like that. I know that my man had been on Smile of a Child at some point. So yeah, unfortunately I watched that. Smile of a Child is a source of a lot of kind of weird memories, not necessarily a lot of scary ones, but just there is going to be at least one more scary one on here. Arthur! There's just, there's just one song in one episode of Arthur where Brain was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was the only thing that's ever scared me in Arthur. I remember specifically the part where he was, like, there was three of them, there was three of him, dancing and switching back and forth. I watched that one in preschool as well, I guess that's why it stuck in my brain. And uh, yeah, I, I had no idea what Jekyll and Hyde even was, so I just knew that Brain was now green and scary. The Spooktacular New Adventures of Casper. I didn't watch a lot of this, but I had uh, some of it on DVD, not DVD, VHS. There was this one, just this one part called The Y Files. The world was melting away and characters characters are vanishing from existence. It's revealed that it's because the creator of the cartoon fell asleep and spilled paint thinner. Very um, ex existential crisis episode. And the part that really, really scared me was this guy, just the way he disappeared, like with his only only his mouth left, and he was screaming, and he's, he's he was just so distressed before he vanished completely. And uh, yeah, mm. I'm only two pages away from an Emmy-winning monologue and a career in feature films. <laughs> okay, back to Smile of a Child again. Saint Bear's Doll Hospital. Oh, yep. <laughs> 
So puppets, right? Um, puppets are going to be 50-50 on me on whether I love them or am absolutely just horrified at the sight. I'm specifically afraid of this nurse. Present tense, I am still scared of this nurse. I can look at the other puppets, I cannot look at this nurse. I never left it on for like more than a moment or two, especially if the nurse was on screen. So I, I have no idea what happened in this show other than it being in, in a hospital. I don't know what happened. Hospitals scare me anyway. I would hate that anyway. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. <laughs> the zombies in general, just how they, how they found out that they're real when Fred took off one's head. I think that's the worst part is Fred decapitating someone. Um, it made me think zombies were real also for like a, a moment, not for very long, but like since, um, you know, in Scooby-Doo, the monsters were never real. They were always, always someone dressed up. So in a show that was like, you know, a show that always told me that monsters weren't real so were suddenly showing me that zombies were real. I thought zombies were real for a moment. And, um, I think my mom or my sister... I forget who, I was so small, um, but someone explained to me that no, they're not real. <laughs> they're not real. I didn't mind the werecats, I thought they were cool, because I like cats a lot. Being a werecat would be cool. Courage the Cowardly Dog, this is on everyone's list. Um, I had very mixed feelings about this show. Most episodes made me nervous, but I still kept watching it. There's not a lot that like really stands out as being like the most scary though. Like how most people will like point out Return the Slab or You're Not Perfect, that, uh, those I don't think scared me extra. Um, the Violin Girl did, because obviously it's a jump scare. Uh, but for some reason, like, the Queen, the Queen of the Black Puddle bothered me a little bit more. Um, because I didn't like the whole getting sucked down the drain things. Because people would actually say that to you when you're a kid. And that's, you know how, how I mentioned before that if something confuses me, it bothers me more. And it could, it confused me how anyone could possibly fit down the drain. <laughs> Like, the thing that, that should have been pointed out, like, no, that can't happen, was the thing that was actually scaring me. So, I didn't like her very much, and I also hated, um, that foot. I don't know what the foot's called, but I do not like the foot. That was gross. Not traumatic, really. Not really scary. Just gross. Just gross. I hate that. Um, I'm trying to remember if they actually played this show at night, or if my family, like, made the room dark for me. And I like watched it at nap time or something. Cause um, either way, I remember the show being like one of the last things I would see before falling asleep sometimes. Like I remember it being dark in the room and being in my bed. <laughs> and I was very prone to nightmares at the time. So that doesn't help. Ghost Whisperer. I loved the show so much. I haven't watched it as an adult. I've only seen it when I was a child, um, but I remember really loving it. And um, it was my favorite show at some point. Some of the ghosts look kind of freaky, but it usually didn't bother me because, I mean, the main character was supposed to be helping them so they could move on, so I felt bad for them. Uh, but I have a terrifying memory of one particular episode, and I can't find any, like, screenshots or clips of it, so I have no idea what episode it happened in or if I'm remembering it right, but I remember getting jump scared so hard by an absolutely horrific-looking ghost inside of a bathroom stall. I really want to know if my memory matches um, what actually happened because it looks so scary in my head still. There was also a Bloody Mary episode and the scary part for that was like how there's like a story about um, a girl being buried alive and suffocated in her coffin and was like trying to claw her way out so her fingernails were like coming off and, and bleeding all over. <laughs> and, and there was like a bell for her to ring if she was buried alive, but like that's useless if no one's around to hear it, isn't it? She could have been saved if someone would have heard. I'll talk more about Bloody Mary later. On to shows and movies that are for a little bit of an older audience, but not quite adult only yet. Scrooged. I know nothing basically that happened in this movie. I haven't seen the whole thing ever in my life. I just remember I was so small for this one. I was sitting on the floor, playing on the floor, and my family had it on. And there was a zombie. He was yelling, and a mouse pushed a golf ball out of his head. Killer clowns from outer space. We're back at the clown. We're back at the clowns. Okay, I was an older kid for this. I was like a young teenager. 
I should not have had this strong of a reaction to this movie. Um, <laughs> I was still scared of clowns at this point. I didn't grow up that until like a uh, more adulty age. Um, so yeah, this movie, there was no way, there was no way I was going to be okay watching it. I, I knew I was scared of clowns. I knew for a long time that I was scared of clowns. Why did I watch the movie? It had killer clown in the title. And look at them. They clearly don't even look like normal clowns. This is some uncanny valley shit. They're, they're way freakier. And the ways they kill people are all bizarre and, you know, bizarre, that's confusing. That's, <laughs> they trapped them in cotton candy that would dissolve them into a liquid so they could drink them with silly straws. They melt people with pie. They kill the dog. Their babies come from popcorn. The babies, the babies are like a jack-in-the-box. I saw a purse, I kind of want. The, the babies are like a jack-in-the-box and it is not okay. Well, I am okay with it now because I want the purse, but it was not okay at the time. I cried. I cried. I was a teenager crying at this clown movie. I cried so much and still watched the whole movie. I watched it from beginning to end. And do you know what I did not long after? I watched it again. It was like days after. Why did I watch it again? <laughs> I cried again. I cried twice at this movie as a teenager. I, I haven't rewatched it um, as an adult yet. I plan to. I want to. Clearly, I'm okay with like looking at them now since I was looking at merch. Um, but I'm still not going to like that the dog dies. Men in Black. The Edgar suit. There's a big cockroach alien that stuffed himself into a human named Edgar, so it's, that's why it's an Edgar suit. It's- it's- he, Edgar has become a suit. And they really made- made sure to, like, look like- like he was wearing a suit, like... Oh, it's- it's- it's not just like, oh... Like, when someone gets, like, possessed or something and, you know, they look the same, but maybe their eyes look different, like, I'm thinking about Supernatural, but they're trying to, like, make it... And it, like... An alien would do it, but I don't know if I'm making sense, but like, but no, for this, it's like, there's like flabby parts of his face, so like, it's like misshapen. It, he does not look like a normal human. I watched this movie over and over and over and over, starting as a very small child. Like, all throughout my life, I've watched this movie so many times. Um, but even though I wanted to watch it, I'd be like, yeah, let's watch Men in Black. I love Men in Black. I would hide in the hall <laughs> and just watch it from there. The part that scared me the most would, it would like make me stay all the way behind the wall was at the end where he would like rip open his Edgar suit from the back and like he like peels it off and fully comes out. It's still very uncomfortable actually. I don't have to hide from it now. I also remember getting um startled in the beginning of the second movie, but I was fine besides that. Um, nothing, nothing bothered me in the third because I was a teenager for that one. There's like a 10 year gap between the second and third movie. Buffy and Angel. <laughs> As soon as Tiny V saw Spike, I was hooked on these two shows, but um, I was not ready for some of these monsters. The episode where Angel uh, got turned into a puppet and like there was an evil puppet talking to kids directly through the TV, you know, breaking the fourth wall, actually acknowledging that they're there. That was, that was scary. That's scary as an adult. <laughs> And then for, for Buffy, um, there's the gentleman, they're pretty unsettling. Gnarl, is that how you say his name? I don't remember, that was an abomination. Um, but the scariest, the scariest one for me, I don't know if I say this right, this looks German. Don't even put that in the video. I don't know if, how to pronounce that, but this guy, he's on the screen, I'm, look at him. I didn't like him. <laughs> He was the one um, that was in the hospital and like sucked the lives out of children through like these things that would come out of his eyes. I, I jumped when I saw a screenshot when researching for this video. I just saw a still picture and it startled me. I have rewatched all of Buffy and Angel as an adult. So yeah, I've seen all of that all over again. The Mummy because of the beetles the, um yeah there's the the beetles they crawl under your skin and then they, they eat your brain i also wasn't a big fan of mummies in general at the time like i thought it was weird that it was just okay for us to be looking at real dead bodies like in history books and at the museums that they would take us to in school they showed us this movie in my elementary school for history class when we were learning about mummies it, that wasn't educational. 
Mummies don't do this. They don't come to life. Beetles don't do this. No, beetles don't do that. Why show me this? We were also shown it in middle school and then again in high school. I'm sh I, I, I've watched this movie against my will at least three times. On to adult shows and movies that I was not supposed to be watching. I'm not gonna tell you what this one is yet because this one was one that took a long time for me to figure out what it was. So this was a mystery memory for a bit for me. So I'm gonna describe it first and then tell you what it was. I was flipping through the channels looking for something to watch and stopped at a scene where a man and a woman were in their car and stopped to talk to an older guy they seemed to know. The man got out of the car and the woman stayed in. The, the older guy said that he had a flat tire. You guys see what, what, what I'm describing here? Everything seemed fine. Everyone was happy, smiling. It was casual com conversation, right? Um, uh, then, then the older guy suddenly throws himself under his vehicle and it's like, oh, what are you doing? All of a sudden, there's so many gunshots coming out of the bushes. They shoot the couple over and over and over. You know what I'm talking about now, don't you? Over and over and over and over. You can't hear their voices over the gunshots, but it looks like the girl screams the entire time and she keeps moving so much, even after she has so many holes in her. And it gave me a weird idea in my brain as a child that like, if you were being shot like that, you couldn't die until it was over. So you had to like, just go through the pain the whole time until they stopped shooting you. That's why I thought. Um, when the shooting was done, the girl falls and I remember her arm hanging down and the older guy, um, they were talking to steps back out and the police or whoever was in the bushes come out in the end. It just ends like that. That's the end. And I didn't know what that movie was called until I purposely looked for it as an adult to figure out what that horrible memory was. Um, yeah, this was the Bonnie and Clyde movie from 1967. <laughs> yeah, at the time I didn't know who Bonnie and Clyde were when I saw that, so. I just thought it was two innocent people who got murdered for no reason at the end. That's what it looked like for me. <laughs> Even knowing the context now, like, this is such a weird memory. This movie is rated R. Um, yeah, I was way too young to see that. Robocop! Speaking of rated R, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I saw the entire movie. I specifically remember the toxic waste scene. Um, I have no desire to watch Robocop at all. A man drives into a tank that has, you know, toxic waste in it. And when he comes out, his body is just sagging and melting all off. He's falling apart. There's, there's nothing that could be done to stop this. He couldn't be saved. He was in horrible pain. He begs someone to shoot him, but for some reason, the other guy doesn't. He just like freaks out and I don't know, I don't understand why the hell he didn't shoot him. Um, and then he gets hit by a car and splatters everywhere and it is disgusting. Um, I also have a little mystery memory here. There's a memory I have of a similar scene in a different movie, but I don't know what one. Like, I think it had a robo robot type character. So I don't know if it was a different Robocop movie or like the Terminator or something, something else. Like, I think I remember a guy falling into like a pool of something that was either toxic waste or something hot because he started melting or something. I, I just remember it being gross. And can someone help help me figure out if this is real or if I had like a nightmare because of Robocop or something? I don't know, it feels real. Supernatural. I didn't watch a lot of Supernatural as a kid. I was interested in it um, and I love it now. But there was one particular episode that I saw that's that that made me too scared to watch until I was older. And it was the Bloody Mary episode. My friends would play Bloody Mary in a really specific bathroom in our elementary school. Um, and they would always like come running and screaming out of there. And I never played because I thought it was stupid to intentionally do something to scare yourself. Like, why would, why would I do that? Why do you want me to do that? All I knew when my friends played it was that um, a ghost was supposed to appear in the mirror and I didn't know if she was supposed to kill you or anything. I don't know if she was actually supposed to do anything or just stand there and be scary. Um, then I watched Supernatural and she melted the eyes of the father of a girl who played the game. So you don't even gotta play the game yourself to die, terrific. So this episode um, and the Ghost Whisperer episode and the kids playing, at, playing it at my school, like all of these three things kind of happened at like, somewhat around the same time for me. So yeah, that was just too much. That was too much Bloody Mary. All right, other 
TV and movie related things. Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. bumpers. Why were these so scary? So first there's Pinch Face. What the, what, what's that? Why would you show this to children? That is, it's, it's just, it's features. It's features without a face, why? And then there was, well, there was Face. Um, a similar issue with Pinch Face. Um, but not as horrible. I had, um, I had mixed feelings about him because he was nice. He was friendly. Um, I didn't always run into the hallway when he came on. Only sometimes, like it was 50-50 on if I was going to run away from face or not. I don't know what determines that. I, I just didn't fully trust him though. Um, he talked directly at me through the screen mm -mm. and he was, he was just, he was too similar to something that I had from a recurring nightmare that maybe I'll tell you about sometime. And I have a memory of another, another bumper, but I can't find any evidence that actually exists. So I don't know if this is also like a weird nightmare or misremembering. I'm not sure if it was Nickelodeon, but it seems like it should be. There was a couch and a chair and some other furniture um, that I can't I can't remember, remember very clearly, but they all had faces and they were singing. And it reminds me kind of a pinch face, like because like pinch face you can see like the different colors, like the pink there. That's those shades of pink. My memory of it is very pink. It was very pink in that room, maybe like red and purple as well. The honeycomb cereal monsters. Awful, 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 awful. These are scary. <laughs> these are so scary. The torment I felt whenever these commercials came on, I took it so personally. Like, just look at them, listen to them, see how they move. That's very bad. I had nightmares that they lived in the bushes in front of our big dining room window in the first house I ever lived in. We had like our own little like, like sidewalk going past those bushes up to our front porch. So if I walked past that in the dream, they would pull me into the bushes and try to get me to stay there and live with them forever. Oh. The craving just hit me too. Honey, go me one, honey, go. I don't know how to pronounce it. Classy <laughs> I don't know, this this thing, this logo of a company um, that produced a lot of Nickelodeon cartoons. Man, Nickelodeon's scary. <laughs> Considering my previous entries, I'm sure you're not surprised that this scared me. PSAs, um, not really spe very specific ones. Um, I know that there was a lot of like the smoking ones, you know, those scared me. I don't know what any of them were called, but yeah, it, pretty much anything that had to do with smoking was scary. And I, it doesn't, I don't know if it actually played where I lived, but I seem like I remember seeing the Boiling Chef one. I don't know if this actually played here or not. Um, or maybe there was a similar one, I don't know, but I do remember a woman spoiling, like, spoiling? Spilling, like, boiling water on herself or something. I saw someone burned. Someone burned. <laughs> In a PSA, I'm pretty sure. Screamers! Fuck them. I'm not going to scare you. Don't worry. I know I know people say that they want and then they do. I am not doing that. Don't trust other people when they say they're not going to. Fuck those people. So, um, the scary maze game never got me directly. I heard the scream when other kids were playing in the library and I refused to look. I I know right away to look away if I see that maze. I've heard I've heard um that the scary face is the girl from the exorcist and i have seen like the still image for it so i know what it looks like but i still haven't like been scared by it i haven't played the maze game i haven't seen anyone play the maze game i did see that picture used in other screamers though there was a youtube video that i watched with my brother that was like a compilation of like cute and funny cats and then all of a sudden this like terrifying just still image of a cat pops up making like a low pitch like uh, type sound and <laughs> the way we ran away from that computer there was another one that had me scared of letting lyrics videos finish because it was it was a screamer at the end of a night wish lyrics video and uh i think I, I, it was crownless it was crownless because um now i have like a weird aversion to crownless even though i like the song so I'll still sometimes like scroll down to, to see if there's something scary at the end of videos that are lyrics videos for some reason. I get so paranoid so easily, don't I? There's only one music video that has ever scared me and it was under pressure for some reason. I know for sure that David's Bowie, Bowie, David Bowie's voice was there. Sorry, I'm stuttering through this because I'm like trying hard to remember for sure what exactly this memory is because I don't even know for sure that I was under pressure, but I watched Under Pressure recently to like try and like fit the memory to it. and i think this was the video because um 
they used clips of like old horror movies. And I think that's what it was. Unless it was like a fan made one that was similar or something. Cause I, I remember a face that I didn't see in the music video watching it now. Video games, Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday, a SNES game. Um, I had Earth, I, I had Earthbound, but you know, this is here and that isn't. <laughs> of all the things that could scare me. It's because of that screaming duck. There's like a scary Daffy Duck with a bunch of sharp teeth. Um, he, he is not meant to have teeth. It was sudden, it was loud. I knew when to expect it. It happened at really specific points in the game, but I still hated it. I still, if I know that a scream, like a jump scare or a screamer is happening, even if I know that it's happening and I like block it with my hand or something, like if I hear it at all, I will be scared. <sighs> This is not the only time that Porky Pig is going, it is the only time in this video, but in the other video that I'm going to make about this sort of thing, Porky Pig is going to show up again. Donald Duck going quackers for PlayStation 2. There are several levels, several levels, several levels. Why is, <laughs> there are several levels where you get chased by a giant disembodied hand. Chase levels can just be stressful in, in general, but I don't know why this hand was like extra scary to me. I don't, I don't understand this one. There's also those hand things in Zelda that scared me. I didn't put that on the list. Uh, the hands were scary. Hurdy Gurdy, also for the PlayStation 2. Um, probably like none of you know what this game is. Your father fell asleep and he won't wake up. There's a herding competition and you need to go do some herding and stuff so that you can wake him up. I don't fully remember the plot. Um, but what I do remember are the critters you would herd. There were dupes, which were my favorite, bleeps, honks, other little guys, um, but not all of the creatures were friendly. This is a grump. He will chase you, and if he catches you, you will get sent flying, and it looks so painful, and, and they'll eat your other creatures. Um, there are traps that you can like have the, the grumps like chase you through, but they won't trigger when you run through it or only do what the Gromp does. Um, and if you trap them near a pen, they'll also be able, they're like smart apparently enough to fish the critters out of it. So you need to like know where the better traps are for the Gromps. Also the music that plays when they chase you is like a big, that's probably the main part of what scared me. It, like, I, I mean, I, you know, it's it's a big scary thing chasing you anyway, and it, it wants to kill cute little critters that I like. That's already bad enough, but like the music was terrifying. Absolute panic music. There are also like smaller ones called Grimps, which aren't a whole lot better. Pretty much any of the creatures dying bothered me because like they could drown, they could fall to their deaths. Like the dupes could, would be flattened sometimes, like the doms. Sometimes the grumps would eat them, I remember, if I'm remembering right. Sometimes they would eat them, but sometimes they would like squish them. They would stomp on them instead, right? But is that the dupe? I'm trying to remember how each animal could die. <laughs> would they stomp? Well, they might have stomped the bleeps. They stomped something. The dupes I remember moving flat too. They might, the dupes might have flattened when they would fall to their deaths. Something had green blood, didn't it? I want to play the game again. I have it still. Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life. Considering my other content, you probably knew this series was going to show up on the list at least once. Um, and out of all the messed up things I've gathered about the series, there's only one game that really like bothered, like more seriously bothered me as a child. And that was A Wonderful Life which is also my favorite. I loved it to death, but oh my goodness. So, so okay, so first obviously there's the bear. The first time he stood up, that wasn't that bad. That, it had me stunned. I was frozen. <laughs> I froze a little bit when it happened because I did not see that coming. I, I genuinely thought I was buying my son a normal teddy bear. And um, I wondered why a cutscene was like triggering for me just buying this bear. Why did Van have to bring it? It's just a bear. Can't I just hand it to him or put it in his toy box? No, why is it alive? I actually like this character a lot. He's, um, he's really neat, but like he would talk to your son. It was a secret. His, your son kept him a secret. Like that is some evil possessed toy 
stuff. But the thing that actually really freaked me out was Daryl. Cause like, you know, initially I just thought that he was, you know, kind of odd, but you know, funny. Um, I didn't want him to hurt Muku Muku, but I didn't think anything serious was going to happen with that anyway. Um, his like bloodshot eyes were kind of weird. But you know, I just thought he was a silly guy, wouldn't actually do anything horrible. Then I caught him watching my toddler through my window. <laughs> <laughs> he still hasn't actually harmed anyone, to my knowledge. Um, and I feel better about him now, but I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him ever. I don't trust him. Okami, PlayStation 2. I was fine with most of the demons. Um, the only ones that really bothered me were Mr. and Mrs. Cutter, because they're like a couple that are already kind of scary when they look human, if I re recall correctly. Um, and you have to like break in at night to their house and drag them into the moonlight to reveal their true forms. And it was so scary. But <laughs> something scared me worse. And it's the stupidest thing in the world. There's a part where you're small and you go to like the, the I don't know how you pronounce it, the place that, um, Isu, Isu, I don't even know how to say his name. The little guy, the little guy, Isu? It's a, it's a place that he's from. It's just a little place you're shrunken down. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, you know, going, like, up and down to get to where you're going. And nothing suspicious until I realize that I am walking on a centipede. I hate that. I hate that. Centipedes are literally the only type of, like, creepy crawlies that scare me to this extent. I'm I have a spider live right now. He's right there that I'm letting live. He's big. He's big. Um, he's not a wolf spider. He's um, a grass spider, but they're big, very similar. He lives in my window. I can't open my window or he'll come in. I don't know if he's a he. <laughs> Try to respect this spider's gender all of a sudden. But <laughs> this spider... I'm totally fine with a spider living in my window. Right beside my- I'm standing on my bed right now. There's a spider right there. I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with centipedes at all. And I- I- I was so, like, offended. And I- this is- this one- does this even go on the fear list? Should this go on the other one? I was, like, mad. I, this probably belongs on- on the, like, sad and angry trauma list. I was upset. So books and stories, of course, obviously scary stories to tell in the dark. That's a, for pretty much the same reason as anyone else. Like the stories didn't really bother me that much. Some of them were kind of gross. Some of them were kind of gross because there was like, is it like the first story in one of the books? It might be the first story in the first book even. There was like the the potato one, but it was a toe or something like that. I hate that. That's disgusting. But it wasn't scary. It was just bleh. Um, but the pictures, that that's what scares everyone about those books. And this one picture that everyone brings up when they talk about this reminds me so much of the girl who was the most popular girl in school at the time in elementary school. Um, <laughs> which is a weird thing to, to say. But, you know, because obviously she, she wasn't a, a corpse. She was, you know, human looking and much prettier in order to be, you know, that liked. But there's like a resemblance in the face shape. So that always felt really weird to me. I thought about it a bit. <laughs> I'm not trying to call her ugly or anything. I promise I'm not. <laughs> there's just, you know, I could feel like they'd be related. And then similarly to that book, actually because of the story, a terrifying taste of short and shivery, 30 creepy tales. I remember only one story. I don't remember a single other story and I haven't been able to read it again. Um, so I don't remember fully how this went, but there was one that, this was so hard to, to find. This was like a mystery memory for me for a little bit. I, I, I figure out which, I, I spent so long figuring out which book this came from. Yara Ma Yahu is how I would assume this is pronounced, but I don't know. It's on the screen. I don't know how to say this. This story, I remember, there was like an actual story. There was, wasn't there characters? They had names. There was like two boys. 
but like pretty much it was instructions also from what I remember on how to survive being attacked by this creature and it had like suction cup fingers and it would jump down at you from a tree um, I think it was like a specific tree, but you know, to me it was just a tree was a tree So I thought these things were gonna come from every tree um, And it would swallow you and spit you out Repeatedly you'd go in and out and in and out changing a little bit as you go until you became one of them As for the instructions of how not to have this happen to you You were supposed to play dead and not react when it tickled you You had to keep you had to pretend to be dead while being tickled and not get up too soon if it hides behind a tree to watch you would try to trick you. There were so many trees where I lived when I read this. We had a big tree, at least until it got hit by lightning, but we had a big tree at the time and I, we lived by the woods and all the neighbors had trees that you had to, to walk under in the dark to, to get to the bus stop. <laughs> and I was already scared of a tick falling on me. And now this, Naruto. I don't have a lot of it's surprising how much anime I, I watched, especially starting at a young age, but there's like only like the Dragon Ball thing and then and Naruto. I think those are the only ones on this entire list of things that scared me. But yeah, specifically the manga. And I feel a little silly that Naruto is on here, but it's, it's not that silly because what bothered me was Gara in the Forest of Death. He was absolutely unhinged, okay? He crushed people to death with sand and their blood would rain down like they would burst. Their blood would come running down and he had an umbrella for this. <laughs> that was horrible, okay? Creepypastas. Um, I read creepypastas because I enjoyed making fun of them. For the most part, I thought creepypastas were dumb and not scary. I would read them out loud to my younger brother and it would it would be a lot of fun. Two stories that stand out as actually being creepy for both of us were Mr. Widemouth and 1999. Those were freaky. But the actual reason I put this on the list was because of what would happen when I read them out loud. <laughs> Nothing happened if I read them to myself in my head. But what I'm so scared right now. <laughs> But when, when we sat down in the living room and I read them out loud, the electronics in our house would start to flip out, especially, espe especially the TV in my bedroom, which is the, I still have the same, why didn't I, why, why didn't, I could have put this TV in a different room. It's the one that's across from me. I have the same one. There's a newer TV in the living room, but I have an old TV that I play games on in my bedroom. That specific TV, I would be reading and we would hear sounds because we were in the living room, it was in my bedroom. We would hear sounds from my bedroom and we'd be like, um, what is that? Did you leave your TV on? No, well, I didn't either. And then we'd both go and look and turn my TV off. No one else was in the house. We did this when no one, when no one else was at home. Um because it was a little embarrassing, but we'd go back into the living room and the next thing we know, my TV's back on again. It happened um, sometimes with other TVs and on the computer, um, other things like that too, but this never happened unless we were reading scary things out loud. I'm inclined to believe it's some sort of really weird coincidence because, you know, I, I'm the first person to try and think of other reasons when something seemingly supernatural happens, but, um, <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. Um, it hasn't happened with the ones, with the two that I've read for you guys so far. Um, actually, by this time, I'll have read a couple others. I'm recording these videos in a different order than what they'll be released. So actually there's going to be more than two, much more than two. So I, I don't actually know for sure if it's going to happen again right now. So this next section is for like things you can touch, tangible things, toys, puppets, things that are actually in the room with me. One of my earliest jump scares, I was a uh, preschool aged and I had a Toy Story 2 Rex toy. I loved Toy Story and I loved Rex, so you know, I was given I was given a Rex toy during Christmas and I was so happy until I pressed the button and he went rawr for the first time and my life was just ruined. And then there's a clown doll 
when I was still scared of clowns that always sat up high on a shelf. It was always there my whole life. You know, before my clown fear, I didn't think anything of it. But once I developed that thing, once I watched Pee Wee Herman, all of a sudden I would look up and just be absolutely horrified. My mom wouldn't take it down either. She would not take it down. So he could always see what I was doing from up there. It's weird though. I remember where he was in the first house and in the third house, but I don't remember where he was in the second house. So I don't know if he was down for that. Puppet at daycare. He was a hand puppet, like, of, I think a horse or something like that, um, that was being controlled by one of our teachers. He made really sudden movements and noises. I had kind of mixed feelings um, on one time where he spat out a bunch of M&Ms, because, you know, it's candy, that's kind of exciting, but also it was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No. In a brave move, a brave, stupid move, one time I like reached out and shut his mouth with my hand and I got sent to the desk. There was a desk that you'd get sent to as punishment. There was one one singular desk in the entire daycare. Like everything else was done at tables and in chairs, but that was the desk. And then more puppets in elementary school, um, they needed organ transplants. They were doing like a show, I guess, teaching, teaching us about Organ donation in elementary school. Don't know why uh, we need to know about that right then, but you know, one puppet was supposed to be a little girl and was talking about how another little girl died and she got her heart. So, you know, I'm picturing this puppet having a real human child's heart in her and I passed out. Mystery memories. <laughs> I don't know what these are from or if they were real. I labeled this one dead under sink. It was probably still in the late 90s, I'm gonna say at the time. A lot of these would be in the late 90s or, or maybe early 2000s, very, very, very early, like 2000, 2001. Can't, can't be much past that, can't be much past that. It was, I think, either a show or a movie. I thought a movie, maybe it was even a PSA. A blonde teenage boy was dead under a sink and, or in a cupboard or something. His head was under something and his dad didn't realize and was talking to him. And then his mom is the one who found out and like started freaking out since, since I was like, yeah, likely a toddler. I, I could be completely wrong, but this is what I thought I saw. So if anyone knows what I'm describing, I've tried Googling all sorts of stuff I don't know what this is. Monster Baby. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the, the, the sink one was live action and this one was live action as well, Monster Baby. I feel like this one may have been a Halloween special for something, maybe. Teenagers, um, at least one boy and one girl, were watching a baby while their parents were away. I don't know if the teenagers were siblings or dating or if they were even actually teenagers or just older kids than me because you know I was I was tiny so you know anyone older looks really old. I think there was a part that had something to do with a mop like the baby might have been eating the mop maybe the baby I think was in a closet I remember it turned out that the baby was actually a monster or like an alien. I think, it, I think they said monster though, but the parents didn't believe them. Only the, the, only the two kids watching the baby saw anything weird happen. And at the very end, the lights are turned off with the baby in a crib and its face is scary somehow. I can't remember fully. I just remember something was wrong with the baby's face. Um, maybe it was an, maybe it was an alien. I think I remember something weird going on with the eyes. I don't know if they were glowing or if they were like white or, or black or green. Yeah, something, something that triggered some sort of uncanny valley feeling for me. And then we have another, another one I was super little tiny thing, blue monster. I remember a blue kind of cookie monster-ish, kind of like hairy-ish. Like, like hairy, hairy, hairy monster, not, not that he was covered. I mean, he did have hair, but um, like that, that, that Muppet, 
it, it was like that. He was standing behind a wall. You know how they, they are a lot of the time in, in certain parts of like Sesame Street. Two human guys were, were on each side, I think, of the monster and they took his eyes. They thought it was really funny and they were like playing around with his eyes and wouldn't let, let him have them back, I think. And, and the monster didn't, I don't think he liked it very much. I don't remember. <laughs> like how upset the monster was or if he or if he did have any fun is this real and then i was older for this next one dog in field is how i labeled i lived in my second house i ever lived in so i was around the age of like nine ish to twelve ish i was this is the sit around the same time where I discovered that Bonnie and Clyde thing. I had a really bad time flipping through channels around this time. Somewhere around that time. I also saw a part of whatever this thing is that I think was the beginning of a movie. A dog was running through a big open field. There were woods nearby, like behind it, and I think like in front of where it was running to. It looked like a happy scene. I don't remember what the music was like. I don't remember if there was like anything in the music to tell me that it was happy or if I should have known that there was something wrong. Um, but I thought it was a happy scene. And then all of a sudden, just BAM! The dog gets shot, falls over, and dies. Just out of nowhere and I changed the channel immediately. I didn't watch anything else. I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what type of dog it was. I think it had longest fur, maybe like a medium sized dog. Um, uh, I hated that. I hated that so much. That bothers me now. I just thought of another that I didn't put on the list, not a mystery memory, um, but this would go back up somewhere in yeah i guess we get bonus entry a bonus entry at the end because that was everything um but one more what was it called what was it called whoever slew madame rue is that what it was called i think it was something like that there was i think it was horror i haven't looked this up i don't know if this is even what it was called it just came to my mind it was like a Hansel and Gretel type story, but not like, you know, not an actual like, no candy or nothing, no magic or anything. It was just, how'd it go? An old lady, she wanted, she wanted the girl and did not want the boy because they were brother and sister. She wanted one and not the other, didn't she? And her daughter was dead. And this is that movie, right? I'm not mixing up with another movie. Her daughter was dead. The body was still in there somewhere. She wanted to replace her daughter with her. And I don't remember what all happens in between, but I know that they like shut her in somewhere and burn her to death in the end. I think that's all. Um, I am going to have to make another one with all the ones that like made me angry or sad because that that kind of gives like a whole different vibe than the ones that made me ooh scared. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy Halloween! Oh, also tell me what scared you, um, you know, as long as you don't mind talking about it, what, what fictional things or anything like similar to that scared you as a child. I think, uh, I think it could be useful to me if I'm not scared of it. <laughs> I can put it in my nostalgia list.